All right, I, I said this. Listen, there are things in sports that I'm excited for. When Harbaugh went to the Michigan, it's better than Brady Hoke just because it's bigger. And I like Michigan. I like big brands. When you're my age, you'll wake up in the morning and you don't want to watch the Twins Angels on a Tuesday. You're gonna, you want big stuff, right? You're still in that young, adorable stage. When did you become Grandpa <laughs> Colin? You used to be Uncle Colin, now you're Grandpa Colin. Okay. I would never, I, if I was an owner, I wouldn't be meddling. But in the case of Zion, I'd be like, fellas, step out of the way. This is Lindros, Bryce. Like, this is going to make me money, too, and I own the team. Can you um, envision a team trading Zion if they got him? No. No, especially many of the teams need a drawing card, and he's yeah. a drawing card. I mean, you, there's an argument to be made that you would draft John Morant ahead of Zion Williamson because – He's a he's a freak athlete. He's a dominant ball handler. He's the kind of guy that will his usage number rating will be much higher. Good point. Um, and though he may not have the initial impact of Zion, I think Zion's going to be initially very impactful, even though he needs to improve his jump shot. I think John Moran has a chance to be a, a dominant guard for years to come. Yeah. But he puts butts in the seats, and that's one of the hardest things in sports. I'm going to disagree with you on Atlanta. You're wrong about Atlanta. This is actually and I, look, I don't love the Atlanta sports fan. But the, the Hawks GM is a former Warriors guy. Yeah. They have their own Steph Curry, and they have John Collins, who's a young, burgeoning star. Yeah. This would give them their own Draymond Green, if you will. Like, again, I think the league would love it if he's in New York. <laughs> right. They wouldn't hate it if he's in Chicago. It'd be ironic if he was in Cleveland. But I would, I would move Atlanta more up the list. You put him with Trey Young, and I'm watching. I'm watching every night. Okay. It, that would be that would be entertaining. Atlanta fans may not watch because they, they they don't always show up for their home team. <laughs> I know. But I would be watching. You know, I you know it's it's interesting about this a Warriors thing, and I we, we talked about this before, is that you were a pass first point guard, and if you would have been a greater shooter, you may not have been as effective as a leader, in that. It's hard for fans to wrap their arms around, but sometimes the best player on the floor does stop the ball. And listen, you can't deny the numbers. I'm watching Golden State. They're 30 and four without KD and with Steph. They look different. They're more fluid. I'm not saying long term it's better, but actually you just did. But that's okay. Okay, but I I will say you're they're, saying they're better without Kevin they're Durant. They're different. And they are different. They're different. They're different. But they're better with Kevin Durant. The, the, you can't. You take the numbers of 30 and four. What games did he not play? Who did he not play? This is like plus minus. Who else was on the floor with right. you when when you when when your your plus minus was was better? Look, it was incredible what they did Friday night in Houston. Incredible. One of the best uh, NBA games I've seen in years. Not just that, but a coaching masterpiece. You know, going through, cycling through your entire bench in the first half, completely changing the way in which you played, you know, using big guys, using Andrew Bogut and Kevon Looney and using Jordan Bell, who'd been buried deep, deep, deep in the doghouse right. and bringing him out, running through offensive sets you hadn't used in, in a game in months and, and getting good looks for the Quinn Cooks of the world. And then, and I thought that exhausted Houston and Houston, they didn't lose the game in the first half, but they could have won the game in the first half and they did not. No question. Um, but if you listen to what the Warriors are saying, they're like, look, we can do it for a night. We don't think we can do it for now. Look, they get a bit of a reprieve playing Portland, yeah. who I just don't think this is a good matchup. Like they like to play fast. They like to play, you know, they're guard dominant. Like they're a slightly lesser version of what the Warriors like to yeah, do. And yeah. they don't have a Draymond Green. Right. Um, but let's let's not take what was a masterpiece on Friday night. Think about this. Andre Iguodala hadn't hit more than four threes in a game okay, since 2011. 2011. We're 2019 now. Okay? <laughs> I know. I mean, you want to talk about competitive greatness? How about a guy who is seen as a non-shooter, he is left open, hits five big threes, and then the biggest play of the game, he actually passed the ball to, to, to Clay. But to the people saying they're better without him, they are different. The ball does move differently. Uh, but based upon how this team is constructed, they need a Kevin Durant to carry them through most nights. And occasionally, they're going to get a Clay Knight in Game 6, and they're, of course, going to get Steph Curry, who's up a little bit up and down, but he can give you 30 in a heartbeat. I, I, I want to uh, say this. I um, This weekend, Friday and Sunday, I watched the NBA, and I just had a ball watching it. And there's so many players I like to watch. And I know Toronto is not good for ratings because – it's the third biggest city in North America, but they don't count for our listeners for our ratings because it's in Canada. Just like Detroit wouldn't count for Canadian Stanley Cup numbers in Canada. So I know that the Eastern Conference Finals is not going to get a good rating with small market Milwaukee and Toronto. That said, I'm just going to speak anecdotally. 
I have had so much fun watching these playoffs. I think Milwaukee's fascinating. I think Boston's drama was infuriating. The Golden State-Houston series, when Katie got hurt, got more fascinating. Portland's a neat story. There's a lot of young stars. Now Zion's coming in. Now KD's probably moving. And LeBron's not here. And I watch my ratings every day. I've been up 30%, 40%. I think – I'm not saying the, the, the league is better without LeBron – but, but I do feel like he's no longer the lead story in the NBA. My show is fine without him. We went a month and talk about him. Philly's fast. You did not go a month without talking Well, not about much. There's not, there's not a chance. I don't, I don't feel like he's the – yesterday, Joyce had something on the show, and I totally agreed. She's like, after the Frank Vogel hire, she's like, God, I just, I just don't care as much about the Lakers. And I was like, 2-0 on that. I agree. I don't think the league is beholden to LeBron as much as all of us think. Well, I look, I, I don't think we're going to find out this year because he is going to be back. Right. I think it's going to be fascinating to see the Frank Vogel thing, the Jason Kidd thing. And mm-hmm. I also think we're a lot of us are looking at it as this, he, Jason Kidd was hired to be the – look, I, I don't know why you would hire Jason Kidd as an assistant. He's never been an assistant. Right. The idea that he was a mentor towards Lonzo Ball, I think there was one phone call between the two, like just kind of a little bit of a do-better talk. I do think that he could be a very good advocate for Lonzo Ball – I personally think that Jason Kidd, look, he's a chip represented by Jeff Schwartz. So, too, is DeAndre Jordan. So, too, is Kemba Walker. I think that's a little bit more what, what this is about than about any sort of coaching uh, masterpiece. I think Frank Vogel's a good coach. He's a grinder. I think he'll be fine. I think they'll be better defensively, and they have to reshape that roster and get more shooters around him. But, look, America loves a comeback, and uh, I still think LeBron has one last push in him. And I, this might actually be the best thing for him. This might give him a couple of extra years on his career that he's not playing right now, not beating up his body, and he'll shut it down this summer. Um, but I do think the league is better positioned for LeBron's ultimate exit than it was for Jordan's ultimate okay, exit. Okay, that, that, that's a way, because, yeah. Because for people who, don't, who, who have forgotten, when Jordan left, there was talent Right there was Vince Carter and Trace McGrady and Allen Iverson and Rasheed Wallace, Marbury but, and, and, and Marbury, but Marbury couldn't win, couldn't get along with anybody. You yeah. know, brought back twice to New York City and he couldn't function. Yeah. Um, you know, Allen Iverson was was a mess off the court. Yeah. And he had the one Finals run, but wasn't consistent. Right. And you know, didn't necessarily buy into to to. To, to being coached. You know, Vince Carter never won enough. Tracy McGrady never won a first-round series. And they they just kind of struggled until they, they found that guy. Yeah. And then that guy's been the picture as con- a consistency. I think with Steph, with Giannis, with, with Kawhi, they're better positioned, but the league still needs LeBron. If LeBron was playing and now we had the Lakers and the Warriors, you would see a ratings bonanza. Let's not kid ourselves. Discover Alerts, if they find your social security number on any uh, thousand of the risky websites. I used to think it was just darkweb.com, but Joy told me there's many bad websites. Free for card members. Sign up online, discover.com slash free alerts. Limitations apply. Apparently, there's just there's all sorts of scary websites out there. So, uh, Doug Gottlieb joining me, the Duggar. Okay, I want to start I want to start with Kawhi. Mm-hmm. The shot heard around uh, at least Canada, not the world. Uh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw you, and we all saw the picture, right? We had Fred Van Vliet on yesterday. It's amazing. Congrats. And a lot of people are like, oh, he's staying in Canada. If they get blown out by Milwaukee, it doesn't mean anything. He's already been the NBA Finals MVP, okay? It's not the biggest thing in his life. Let me throw this at you. The shoe deal. New Balance went all in on him. He's their guy. He's not much of a talker to begin with. If you don't have much of a talker and I, I get all my chips on the table for Kawhi, I'd like to at least have a market talk for you, Los Angeles over Toronto. Like I, I don't, I don't know what he's doing, but this shot didn't mean anything to me long term. I, I would, I would, I generally agree. First, the shot itself, I've never seen that. I've, I've, I've watched a lot of basketball in my life, and um, you know, synthetic basketballs they use in college and in high school. Sometimes they have bizarre bounces, <laughs> but to see one hit the front rim twice, yeah, then the back rim twice. And then go in. Like, yeah. I've never seen that. That's yeah. an unbelievable shot in addition to over Joel Embiid, yeah. falling away into the bench, doing the old squat and watching it. Like, the whole thing. But I've, I've never seen a shot. Maybe it's because I'm not a shooter. That's a shooter's role, right? right? Um, but I, I agree with you. I don't think it changes if Kawhi stays. Like, I don't think he cares. I think he likes playing basketball. Yeah. I think he likes that he's the guy. Yeah. But I don't think there's any sort of affinity towards Canada. Yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with New Balance's okay. shoe deal, right? right? Like, I'm sitting here wearing these new Kevin Durant shoes, right? But, yeah. it, you know, they were selling them in Oklahoma City. They'll sell them in 
Golden State. They sell a guy because he's marketable. I, I, I don't think that matters, especially the idea of going to the Clippers. Uh, when, when the Clippers were rolling and they had Blake Griffin and Chris Paul, Chris Paul's a Jordan brand guy. It's not like people were running out in droves to get his shoes. Okay. If you win, if you're successful, if people want to emulate the way in which you play, if you have a little bit of swag, they'll buy your shoes. It's really that simple. I, I actually think Canada would be a better spot to sell shoes because it's unique. It's a huge international market. Yeah. It's actually a huge kind of basketball wellspring for a lot of talent for the present day and the future in basketball. But I don't think this has anything to do with New Balance. Like, New Balance is the perfect shoe for Kawhi, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, New Balance makes basketball shoes? Yeah. Yeah, and their spokesperson is somebody who doesn't actually speak. That's great. <laughs> Let's go back to Zion. Uh, you know, I the, 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 the two things I see, um, I think he has a, uh, from the, the smile and the love for the game, there's a magic feel. As a player, there's some Barkley and some Larry Johnson where he just looks bigger and stronger than college kids, and he's got that Barkley where for his size – even though he'd be a four, he's about six six, and he he just runs the floor for a big guy really really well. Yeah. And you can you throw some Blake and some Carl uh, uh, Malone and all this stuff. But the love of the game is very magic, and the style of game is very Barkley and Larry Johnson. Let's just Steph talk. Steph Curry love of the game too. Like is, one of the is, things that draws us to Steph Curry. Steph Curry seems to be having a good time out there. I think that really matters. What 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 worries you about his game? What worries you? His body. Is his uh, it's 285 pounds? He's six foot five and three quarters bare feet. That's a lot of weight. And if you saw the torque that it put on the shoes, it's incredible. That's the torque that's being put on his ankles, his knees, and his hips and his back. So look, I, I think here's what people have to remember: he's perfect for the new NBA. Yeah, perfect. Long arms, great lateral agility. Unbel he has when he turns it on, he's got a pretty good motor. That was the big questions last year. He's a little bit heavy. And he didn't necessarily always have a great motor, and he couldn't really shoot. He's improved as a shooter, he's improved his body, and he's improved his motor, to which he plays hard. I think it's, he benefited greatly from playing at Duke around their culture. And I think he fits in. And do you remember the movie Weird Science? Yeah, I do. John Hughes movie, right? Yeah. Where they're, you know, uh, uh, was it Anthony Michael Hall, where they're cutting up you know, little they're cutting up the, the favorite things they like, the different models. Yeah. And then poof, out comes a woman. Right. right? It, that's exactly what it is. It's Larry Johnson. It's a little LeBron. It's, you know, a little Barkley, a little Blake Griffin, a little Draymond Green. And that's he'll be a better offensive version, yeah. more athletic version of Draymond Green. But the only fear is, I guess he's got to continue to develop his jump shot and uh, his body. Right. Like. He, he's big boned. He's thick. He doesn't look like a basketball player. His legs are football thick. Yeah. Can you thin him out and not change who he is? Yeah. God, I love watching. I just absolutely my favorite college. No, player. He, he and as as good as he is to watch on TV, you go watch him in person, and you just his jaw drop. You can't stop watching him. He can score in the post. Uh, he likes to pass. His teammates like him. He plays hard. Like yeah. there's nothing not to like about the kid. Yeah. Really easy to root for. Hi everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.